Let's say, for instance, I mean, a sex life, put it this way. And you go to, you go to bed, all you gotta do is this. And that's it. And, I mean, you don't know, try to do the spark of everything. I mean, hey, that get old. I mean, you <laughs> just can't do it. That's, uh, what? Okay. <laughs> Just go get something new. <laughs> okay, all this part right here, Joe's gonna be in the blooper reel. Let me finish it. <laughs> Alright, guys. Hey, guys, Bobby here, and I've dragged Joe on the show today. He, she, she dragged me. He Trust is me. gonna be such a sport. It is her 30th wedding anniversary. We got married December the 20th, 1986. This is December the 20th, 19, 2016. 2016. And um, some of you have asked for this type of video, like an Ask Babs type thing to where I can answer questions about our marriage, I guess, and about marriage on a whole. This is not going to be one of those deep, you know, type of videos where we're going to talk about don't go to bed angry. Don't, um, like the uh, church people would say, man, you're the priest and the prophet of your home. And we're not going to say all that stuff, okay? We're just going to be ourselves. Mm -hmm. Joe is a little bit nervous. I am scared. I'm not nervous. <laughs> it's just that I don't like to do things like You're this. uncomfortable, right? Not nervous, but uncomfortable? Yeah, side off, side off, side off. I'm you scared. Know what? I'm going to get through with it. I'm scared to death because yeah. Joe has an unfiltered sense of humor, and I'm so afraid of what he's going to say. But I wrote some questions down. They're pretty close to 20 questions, give or take, thereabouts. Some of them are just fun and silly. Some of them are a little bit deeper. And we're going to run through them and give you guys our honest answers, okay? Now, you guys know how show business works. So we didn't tape this on the actual wedding anniversary. But we're definitely going to publish, upload and publish on the actual anniversary. So let's go with the first question. What was the high point of our year this year? What would you say? I have my own answer. Joe has his own answer. So, and oh, wait, first of all, we did run through the questions first. I don't want you to think these are blind questions. And some of them were really difficult to answer. And I don't even know if we'll still have an answer right now. So there you go. What was the high point of our year this year? Well, let's see. Well, give your answer from your heart because I have my own. I wouldn't do the one thing I would say is that we're healthy. That's about it. That's a good answer. He's he's he had a difficult time with this question because we've had kind I mean, of a rough year. This year was rough. This year was rough. I mean, financial wise, in the business and all. This year was rough, but mm -hmm. at least we still got our health and you know, our kind of health, and so we could move on. As long as we're <coughs> healthy, we can fix anything, right? That's right. <clears throat> the high point of the year for, for this year for me for 2016 was the fact that Sherry Shepard came to the house. She came to the cooking show on April the 1st and I did I do not know Sherry Shepard. I did not know Sherry Shepard. I invited her for three months and then she came and she was gracious and kind and giving and everything that I had hope mm -hmm. and um, anticipated. So that was the high point I would say. And we still, we still stay friends. So. Yeah, we're still friends with her. What was the low point of our year this year? I've got my answer. You guys know my answer. The low point? Mm hmm I would say the business again. It's not that this year was rough when it comes to the business. It was rough this year. I mean... And uh, it's because of what all we had to endure. Right. Because my answer to this question, of course, is the death of my mom. Mm -hmm. June the 7th will be in, the, in my brain forever for 2016. You guys know that I lost a lot of loved ones, but the most important one was my mom. So that was the low point. What has been the high point of the last 30 years of marriage for us? I think we both have the same answer for this one. I would say my three kids. Yes. Yes. Our three beautiful children. They're smart they're honorable they uh, listen they live here with us still and they listen and they contribute in every way shape and form and i can't say enough good things about my kids and i know a lot of parents do that but honestly um i think had it not been for this man that's right here next to me i don't know if the kids would have turned out that well because i'm more laxed and joe is very firm with the raising of the kids the way i look at it folks i mean your kids uh, I mean, you you could be, don't be your, your kid's friend. They're not your friend. They're your kids. I mean, I joke and laugh with my kids. I play with my kids. 
I mean, even though my kids are bigger, I mean, my kid, you know, boys and still wrestle, spar, and all that kind of stuff, but they know how far to go. When yeah, I they know them, that line. Right. I noticed that, yeah. yeah. So, hey, it's just a matter you gotta make, you got to have respect for them, and they got to have respect for you. I mean, not because they're your kids, you know, you're, um, you don't have a respect them. You got to respect them. Mm -hmm. To get respect, you got to be uh, give respect. So, mm -hmm. you know. I don't like when I see single moms and they have like a boy that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old and the dad leaves and they go, you're the man of the house now. No, he's not. No, he's not. You're the man and the woman of that house and he's still the kid. You know, don't ever put the kid in that position to be the man of the house because he's not, you know? Okay, so um, what proof do you have that I love you? And then you can ask me the same question. Mm, let's see. I said, I've got to think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it no, you, <clears throat> when things are good, when it's during there is feast. When it's feast, uh huh. We all enjoy it. Uh -huh. When there's farming, uh -huh. well, we, we buckle down the hatchet and we. Just move on until things get better again. We yeah. press on. Right, and you don't complain about, oh, I got to have this because I used to this. No, we got to do what we got to well, do. Well, wait, stop stop the presses. Mm. When I asked Joe this question last night, I wrote his answer down because he had me on the floor. I said, what proof do you have that I love you? And he goes, you don't steal my money. <laughs> <laughs> it's right here. You don't steal my money. <laughs> I had to laugh because that was so Joe. He has such a wicked sense of humor. Well, I'm going to get deep on this one. Because I learned this about six or seven years ago, and um, I really and honestly believe this is the proof that you would have that anybody loves you, not just your spouse, but even your children, your parents, your friends, and it has to do with the three P's. We always say this when we go be in anybody's studio audience for TV and stuff. Whenever they hear that you've been married 20 years, 25, 30 years, they open their eyes and they marvel like, oh my God, how do you stay married that long? And they ask you, what is the secret? And I always say the secret are three P's. And they're like, P's? What's going on? PP? <laughs> and <laughs> the answer to that is provision, promotion, and protection. Okay? Your significant other, you know, if it's a friend or your spouse or your kids, they have to have a desire to want to promote you in everything that you do. If you have a friend and everything that you try and you tell them you're going to do something and they're like, nah, nah, that's not going to work, you know, and they don't want to help you get to that next level, then that's not a true proof of love. They, you know, they probably don't love you. The next one is a willingness to um, provide for the person. So even if it's in a friendship, you want to see that person not suffer. So if I see my friend Leah around the bend and we're just friends and she has trouble paying her light bill and I can give her the money to pay the light bill or vice versa, then you do that, right? Mm -hmm. And in spouse relationship type thing, Joe has always, always desired to provide for me. And the same, I want to provide for him too. At first, I couldn't provide money because I wasn't working you know, outside of home, home. Now I'm doing YouTube, so I get a little bit of money in. It's not a whole lot. But whatever money I get, if it doesn't go to the house, I, I do something good for Joe. One second, babe. And um, he, um, I, I always, at first when I couldn't provide money, I wanted, I provided a nest without thorns. I made sure he came home to a happy home. Go ahead, inject what you want to inject there. Well, I was just going to mess around. Right no, play, you can play. No, no, I was just saying that when you get that money, you got to give it to me because I'm the boss. I'm the bull. He always says, I'm the bull. <laughs> no, no, folks, I mean, hey, I'll tell you what. When me, when me and her first get married, I used to pay the bills. Before I was I used to live by myself, I pay the bills, I do everything. Mm -hmm. And the minute we get married, I teach her how to pay the bills. And from that day onward, she take care of that. I don't even get in there. And anymore. you have no stress. Nope, I don't have no stress. <laughs> Just give me money from my pocket. That's it. You He's can... wise. He's <laughs> wise. My last thing, I, I didn't want to lose my train of thought about the nest without thorns because that's really important. And if you're a wife and you're not working outside the home and you can't provide money inside the home, mm. it doesn't matter if the house is clean. It doesn't matter if it's organized or in order. Blah, blah. What matters is that when he walks in, he feels that joy, that you're happy that he walked in. When Joe used to work at the old job before we became self-employed, a lot of the times he would be coming home unhappy and hungry and his sugar levels would be low. He would come in hangry and the kids are here maybe in their diaper without shirts and stuff. But they're like, Daddy! 
and they're so happy to see him hug 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 then feed him right away and then just take care of whatever his his needs are at that moment the last thing about the proof remember i told you were three p's uh, provision promotion protection he has to have a passion to want to protect you you know and 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 likewise you know you want to have to protect him like i protect his good name Mm -hmm. Right. He protects me physically. There's nobody that can come up and point in my face. I can't go to Joe. You know, I, I can go to Joe and say, oh, that person came and they touched me where I didn't want to be touched. Oh, I, shh, you better take this man off of them like a spider monkey. You know, so, and that's for with anybody, with your friendships, with your kids, anything. So the three P's, if you can remember that provision, promotion and protection. OK, so those are the proofs of love. So I just wanted to get a little bit deep right there. Um. What is my strength? What do you think my strength is? And I'm going to tell him what I think his strength is. What you're doing right now, talking. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like I got insulted just now. <laughs> no, no, really, because, uh, I mean, that's what you love. You love to get in front of the camera and talk about, I mean, you could sit here and talk all day about something. While I, I'm not like that. I go and talk about this and that. Plus, I mean, ask me a question, I give you the answer. That's it. Done. <laughs> Done. I think Joe's strength is his ability to find solutions. No matter what it is, if it's a financial trouble we're going through, he'll find a solution. If it's something broken in the house, physical wise, like the chair or the TV or the guitar or whatever, he, we, we, everybody who meets Joe calls him MacGyver, you know, because he knows how to fix things. He, he can find a solution. Not all the time. I, I, I promise you it's each and every time. If that thing is not fixable, then he'll find a way to replace it. You know, so it's a solution. Um, Okay, this one. This mm. one's fun. Mm. Would you hate it if I made more money than you, Mona Me? Would you? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> and that was his answer last night too when we yeah. ran through hey, these I, questions. Hey, I ain't got time for worry about that. I want you to make more money and it's time for me to relax now. No, that's a good strong man <laughs> right there that knows his worth. He knows behind uh, no, every no, strong no. man, there's a good strong man. Like some, like, some, <laughs> like some next uh, man I want your yeah, wife or to make who cares? If I mean, if you got the ability to do it, then do it. Why? Why? I mean, why hold you back because you're a woman from doing what you want to do? If you right, that's. Mm -hmm. I don't. That's. I like that about you. What would be your dream vacation? To be at the beach in Belize right now. I would say in Placencia. Uh huh. By the beach side, underneath a coconut tree, in a hammock. With a hammock. <laughs> with a. <laughs> When I, I mean, I, I hardly drink beer and this stuff. I maybe I take maybe two beer for the year, maybe. Uh huh. But I'll put. A, but you still want beer underneath yeah, that hammock? I take a like a a, a a cursing pan or whatever it is, a bucket and. No, a bath pan. A you know, there's the... it's a beer sitting in there. It's just sit there, and drink it and see what you sleep. <laughs> and he doesn't even drink like that. But it's just the idea of that you're on vacation that you should drink, right? <laughs> My dream vacation is any vacation where I don't really have to plan it. Yeah, that's true. I don't want to have to plan it. We've gone on many road trip type vacations when the kids were younger to see Uncle Les and stuff. And I, I like that part of the vacation that you're going to see loved ones that wants to see you. Um, loved ones that want to see you. Let me fix my grammar. <laughs> But I don't like that I had to plan it. I had to cook the meals to take with us. And then when I came back, I had to wash everything and put everything away. I'd like to just get picked up in a town car, be driven to the airport or be, or be driven to where I'm going to go if it's a road trip. Mm -hmm. And just get there, have fun, be the highlight of the party and everything. And be I don't even mind cooking when I'm there. I don't mind cooking for the people I, that are there. I don't want to cook. He doesn't want to cook at the, at the vacation. I don't okay. mind cooking when I'm there. I really don't. But I don't want to clean up the mess when I'm done, you know, and I don't want to have to come back home and take sand out of the bags and, you know, like went to the beach or stuff like that. So any one, any vacation that I don't have to plan and one that in, uh, involves me visiting loved ones. Okay. If you could meet anyone in the world that are alive, who would it be? Folks, let me tell you, I love country music and I love Mr. Joy Jones. So that's who you'd meet. Like He's him. so sorry he wasn't able to meet him while he was alive. That's why I make a little song about George Jones, you know. But. This one was pretty hard for me because the person that I've admired since I was like 18 years old has been John Schneider, the one that was on the Dukes of Hazzard. I loved him when he sang country music. And I've met him and he was just delightful. I, I'm so blessed that the stars that I've met have been so cool. So cool. I met Boris Kojo and his beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. 
I met John Schneider, I've met Sherry Shepard, Mario, well, Mario doesn't consider himself to be a celebrity, but I do, he's a newscaster. And um, I can't remember everybody else that I've met so far, but I've met quite a few people and they've been very delightful. I have not met any of these stars that have been, you know, too big for their britches, so to speak. So to answer this question, it would be either President Obama or President Bill Clinton. And why? Uh, Bill Clinton, because I want to thank him for paving the road for us to become citizens of this beautiful country. And President Obama, because I want to thank him for giving us our health care back. And I'm not trying to get political. These are intimate things that I would like to uh, thank these two men for. And of course, I would love to meet their beautiful wives mm -hmm. because I just think that, you know, they, they exude grace and class and beauty, inner beauty and strength. So these are the people that I would love to meet. Um... What makes you most uncomfortable? Well, I'm doing right here, right now, sitting here talking to you guys. <laughs> and it's not the talking, because as you can see, he can talk. It's the sitting still. You can't sit still. Nah, I got to keep my move. I can't sit one place too long. I got to move. I always tease him that he has ADHD. And I know that's a real thing, and he probably doesn't have it. But man, this man cannot sit still. Mm, at 59, he's still like on the go. Um, what makes me most uncomfortable, honestly, is when people try to approach me to join a network marketing company. I can't tell you. We can be best friends for 30 years, and then you come up and you join a network marketing company, and I'll be happy for you, and I'll give you your big ups and everything, because I do think network marketing companies can work, especially if you have that type of personality. I don't think, you know, they're not all pyramid schemes. But you really do have to have the personality for it. And I don't think I do. As outgoing as I am, I simply don't have that type of personality because I don't like to like beg people for things. And I feel like you're always begging people for things or trying to snow them. And then that person that's wanting to get you into their network marketing company gets annoying. And then you start avoiding them and not make eye contact. And I get so, the minute I hear somebody that I love join a network marketing, marketing company, it's worse than they join a new religion that's not considered a real religion. And I just, I move on from the friendship. I get very uncomfortable. I don't like to be approached by it, especially if they say, hey, give me a call later. I have this business opportunity. I want to speak with you about it. I'm like, oh God, no, 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 no. I'd rather them ask me for sponsorship where I can just give my money and walk away, you know? Um, who was your favorite fictional character ever? Joe could not come up with one. He's not really into steady shows and acting and stuff. Mm -hmm. I came up with one and it was um, Raymond Reddington from The Blacklist Red. It's played by um, James Spader. I, I like this actor a lot. I love the sound of his voice. Anything that he's in, he can just talk to me all night long. I would love to have him on my show to come and just say, you're watching The Bear Pantry Show in his beautiful, smooth, silky voice. So because Joe couldn't come up with a fictional character, I've allowed him to come up with a singer. And of course, you guys know George Jones already, but he's allowed to pick a second singer that he loves. Well, I got, I got, I would say three singers I really like. I like uh, Conway. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Conway Tweedy, yeah. George Jones, and who else? I'm Charlie, Charlie Pride. You like Charlie Pride? I like Charlie. I didn't realize you like Charlie Pride that much. I like Charlie. Um, if you could choose any name other than the name that you have, which is Joe or Joseph, uh, what would your name be? <laughs> you quit that. I don't know. It's a good question. Let me go first then mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't choose a different name only because the way I got my name was so special. My mom had a sister that died at age six in 1959 from diphtheria. And my grandmother was grieving the loss of this baby. And I was the first granddaughter born into the family. My older brother was the first grandchild, a grandson. And my mom named me after my aunt fully, Barbara Marie. And I feel so honored because I feel like I got extra love because of this. But honestly, if I had to like choose my own name, I, of course, Jada would be my first option because I named my daughter Jada. I thought it that important. But Jada's middle name, Julianne. If I were to pick my own name, it would probably mm -hmm. be Julianne. So what would be yours? Did you come up with one yet? No, uh, I think I would stick with my same name because... I can tell you why you like your name. Why? Because he's named after his dad. And he's not the firstborn son. He's the secondborn son. But his mom saw it um, necessary to name him after his dad. So he's a junior. Well, and you, you admire and respect your dad. I'll tell you what. Mm -hmm. I act just like my dad anyway. He does. <laughs> the older brother that has a different name than not the dad's name does not act like the dad. Joe does. Joe acts just like you his know, dad. You know, sometimes I pick up, I, when I 
And I check myself. What? You know what I'm doing? What my father is doing? <laughs> <laughs> and it's not because he's getting older. He's always been like that. The the wicked sense of humor, the annoyingness that he has where he'll bug you. I mean, you saw, well, you guys are going to see in the bloopers at the end how this man came out here to be on this show. And if they, it, I mean, I sit here and people watch me, you tell a lie on me. <laughs> Would you rather be rich or famous? I'd rather be rich. We get about famous. Me too. I just want to get famous Me and get too. rich. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, if the fame comes, if the richness comes through the fame, I'm good with it. Right, right. But I'd rather just be secretly rich. I'd, I'd rather be a baller, have all the money in the world, and just go around and give, 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 give to people who need. I, I'm seriously, that I would love doing that. Um, what is something you really, you'd really like to get better at? Something you'd really like to change. It doesn't have to be something physical about yourself, but something that you're working on. Playing the guitar. Playing the guitar, yeah. That's that's an honest answer from Joe, playing the guitar. For me, I'd really like to get better at the two languages that I know besides English. I know quite a bit of Spanish and I know quite a bit of light, um, sign language. And I'd like to get into classes uh, for both I, of those. I think I'll take back up the sign language. The sign language. A little bit. Yeah, I'd really like yeah. to perfect those languages better. Um, let's see. What is your favorite dessert? Mm, strawberry have, ice cream. I have a lot of faves. Strawberry ice cream. Yeah, you like Hagen dazs um, he, he likes a specific brand, strawberry ice cream, not just any old strawberry ice cream. Um, I think my thing would be ice cream too, because even though I like bread pudding, you know, my mom's bread pudding, mm -hmm. and I like different types of cakes, and, you know, because Joe likes lemon cake too, but it says the one that you like the best. The, the, what? Go ahead. Ice, ice cream first, then my lemon cake. Lemon cake next. Yeah, so my thing would be ice cream, but it would be chocolate ice cream. And it doesn't have to have stuff in it, like nuts and marshmallows and whatever, but it can. But it doesn't have to, just as long as it's chocolate ice cream. Um, how do you think others perceive you when they first meet you? When people first meet you, what do you think they think of you? What do you think they see right away? Honest. I try to be yeah. honest with everybody, you know? you know. Yeah, this is a hard one for Joe to think of last night, and he didn't come up with an answer, so I like that answer. Right away, I'll tell you guys a story. Even if Joe's in the parking lot at some uh, supermarket and he comes across like an old white lady trying to load the trunk of her car with, you know, a big old case of water or something, if he approaches them, you know, from a far enough distance because he's big, black, bald, and burly, and he says, let me help you with that. At first, they're like taken aback, like, oh my God, this is a stranger. And then they see his honest face and they're like, oh, thank you, young man, thank you. And they allow him to help. So I think people see that honesty right away. That's the best way to be, folks. Be honest with people. I mean, hey. No, I mean, sometimes they say, oh, it, it, it might take a little while to work out, but you can work out at the end. Be honest. Um, for me, I had to ask Jada the, the answer to this question because I don't know what people see when they first see me. And Jada says all her friends that, you know, it's undeniable. All her little friends, the first thing that they see when they meet me is my sense of humor. She says, because even like if it's like a guy coming here for the first time to take Jada on a date or something, and I and they walk in, I have an ability to make them feel at ease because Joe scares the bejeebas out of them. And I have an ability to make them feel at home and at, at ease right away. And I'm like, okay, your mom is so cool though. She's got a cool sense of humor. I like to mess them up when they come. I say, okay, young man, you sit down here. Let me talk to you. Look at me. <laughs> they get so scared. <laughs> And, and um, my friend that passed away in October, she was so much into God and stuff. I, I, I didn't know anyone that loved the Lord more than that, than that um, lady. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would sit there and I would tell her some wicked things that I'm wishing on somebody. Like, oh, and she'd say, boo, you need Jesus, boo. Let's pray. Let's pray. So, and I would laugh because I could tell her these things. And I could tell my friend Leah, who's a pastor, some of the things. And I have them cracking up all the time. I think I have my mom's sense of humor and I didn't even realize it. Because I just really have an ability to tell a story. I love storytelling. I think that's why I love doing the videos for YouTube. Because I love to tell a story. You know? So I think that's what people see right away when they see me. They see my sense of humor and they see Joe's honesty. Um, okay, what would your inner animal be? Let me go first. I'm a lioness because I take care of my kids and my family. <laughs> What's yours? I think it'd be a bear so I could claw. <laughs> His is definitely a bear. He's built like a bear. And then on top of that, he's always dreaming that he's being chased by a bear. <laughs> That's his one recurring nightmare that he has. He's always dreaming that he's being chased by a bear. What is up with that? I don't know. Ever since I've been married to him when he has a nightmare, that's the nightmare. So, 
Okay, what is my favorite trait that you like of me? The last, the last part of it's not going to be a question. It's going to be advice. What's, what, what's something that you like about me? It could be physical. It could be emotional, spiritual, whatever. You always speak your mind. That's about it. I mean, you speak your mind. Last night when he answered this question, he told me he loved my smile. Oh, you know, I was just playing. And then he yeah, said, he smile. said pretty words like, because it lights up a room. But what he really meant is that when I smile, my smile is genuine. Mm -hmm. he, he was fixing it. Like, he goes, when you smile, your smile's never fake. You know, like, I don't know. <laughs> my smile is like, it's legit. It's real. Because he doesn't smile like that. Who? You. I smile. <laughs> you smile, but not like that. So the camera stopped just now, guys. So show me the smile. You want to see my smile? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't. Let me see. Let me see. Let me try to make a smile. Make something look good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The trait that I like about Joe the most mm -hmm. is that he never cries. And when I first got married to him, guys, it scared me because I figured he didn't know how to be in touch with his emotions. And I don't mind a man that cries. I really don't. But I really respect that he doesn't cry. And I it comforts me because... If I were to ever see this man cry, I know the world has come to it's an end. It's not that I don't. I mean, I feel everything. I mean, I... No, I didn't say that you didn't feel. I said you just don't put it in tears. Mm -hmm. And if you see him cry, it's because he's that angry. You know, he's the kind of person that will cry when he's that angry because you just really got to him. And uh, like I said, if I saw him sit here and just weep tears, I would say the world has come to an end and he's lost all hope because he's shedding tears. He does feel it at a deep emotional level. Like when I miscarried my baby in 1995, I know he felt it. We talked about it, so I know he felt it. When my mom died, he felt it for me and, and for himself because my mom was like really good to Joe. She mm -hmm. was really good to Joe, you know, and so he felt it, but he didn't cry. And that's what I needed at that time. And when I was mulling over the questions with Jada, Jada was like, and also, I like that daddy has the ability that he allows you to cry. He never stops me from crying I'm and saying, cry. shut up and stop crying. What are you crying about that for? You know, that's happened a long time ago. Wait, he never does that. You never diminish the fact that I need to shed some tears. I mean, if that's the way to get up the frustration and different thing, and that's when you got to do it. So now, the fun part of this video, mm -hmm. some advice towards the end. So I've asked Joe to give the brothers, the men, some advice on trying to find their significant other or their spouse. What's the main advice? You don't have to like get too long-winded, but what's the main advice you would tell the men, not the women, the men? Hmm. If you find a woman that try to take everything, like materialistic? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Find a materialistic woman, you gotta watch that. Run? Huh? They have to run? You gotta watch it. Maybe you got, maybe you gotta run too, but uh, you gotta watch it. <laughs> if you find a woman always up in your face and loud, run. <laughs> For me, I don't like a loud woman. Is it wrong? I'm serious. I don't like a loud woman. I like somebody that is. I would say be a woman. That, I mean, they don't have to be silent. Right? No, be, you can uh -huh. talk and different things, but you know, some got a, a, a loudness and it mean they want to be up in your face. Uh -huh. Ooh, that's not for me. I'm gone. <laughs> What is okay? Those are the bad things to yeah. look for in a woman. Yeah. What are the good things that the dude can look for in a woman? A woman that understanding that that is not uh, what you say like um, diggy grabby, <laughs> materialistic or whatever. You went right back to it again. <laughs> well, so, uh, let, let me explain that to you. Um, for instance, if we have financial difficulty. Right. I'm not going to be the kind of spouse that's going to need a Louis Vuitton purse or a Michael Kors purse. I don't need that kind of purse ever, but I'm saying that I would know not to need that kind of purse at that time. I don't need to get a manicure, a pedicure, and I don't need to go get my hair did, you know, and especially if we're broke, tie that sucker up in a bun and move on until money comes, right? Mm -hmm. And the next thing, I mean, and me and Bob, mm -hmm. if we got, I got, when we got money and she's something that she wanted, she don't going to have come and ask me. Can I, if you see something, you got the money back. I mean, yeah. because I know that, I mean, I know my wife is not going to squander the money. And I mean, I'll be the one to spend the money faster than her. Yeah. So he's an emotional spender. Yeah. So if she sees something out there that she wants, and 
You don't have to ask me. Why should we call it four days and the bill is paid? That's fine. Okay, what would you tell the sisters, the women? What would you tell the women if they're looking for a significant other? Because you already talked to the brothers. Well, if a woman, if you're looking for a husband, like what I like to say, I'm looking for a husband. <laughs> Doing church talk. Go ahead. <laughs> uh huh. If you see you dating a man, uh, a man for at least ninety days, so three, three months, months. Uh huh. And he don't want to. I mean, you want to get married to him, and he don't want to get married and all that stuff. I tell you what, it's time to get out of it because you could tell if you want to marry somebody before ninety days. For a man, right? A man, man can man. tell. Uh huh. So if you see you doing all the right thing for that man, and you know you passing all the tests, and when you when the test is over. You don't want to um, do nothing about it, it's time for you to get out of that. And w what's one of the good tests that you can give anyone, not just a dude or whatever? What's a good test that you can do for people to see, like their whole character? Remember that? We discussed that one time. Give them something. You give them something. Remember, maybe if you give remember. them something. Give them a gift. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh -huh. you're so give, what happens when give you give them a gift and see how to receive the if they If they receive the gift? Mm hmm and with appreciation, right. uh huh? Yeah, receive a gift of appreciation. Mm -hmm. Then you know that's somebody that you worthy, can, right? Worthy, uh, you keep on going with it. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I think um, my advice. I'm gonna advise um, the women first. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I hate to see women in the church that fall into the trap when the pastor says, "If you want a husband." run up to the front and bring a husband seed, which is money usually. That angers me so much because that's not the way to get a husband. You can pray to God to find you the right mate. You know, I'm just saying, yeah, prayer works. You can pray to God for that. But if you're desiring a husband, you have to show that you want a, a mate. So, for instance, you can't lock yourself away in a room and crochet all day and expect that that mate's going to show up. Not everybody is that lucky like me. He showed up at my doorstep. He gave my aunt a ride to the house. He saw me. And that's how we met 30 years. What, 32 years ago? 30, it's, it's 30 years anniversary, but we've been together 32 years. 32 long years. Boy, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so don't run up to the front of the church and take no husband seed. What you need to do is go clean out half. Or if you're like me and Joey, you need to clean out three-fourths. Because he has more closet space than I do. Off the closet space and leave it empty. Look at that closet and see if you really want a, a mate's clothing to be there. You know, do you really want that? Then I know a lot of women, when they get up to be of a particular age, 40s, 50s, I'm 50, they tend to have the bed shoved against the wall and that whole half of the bed where that mate would be is full of the Bible and the books that they're reading and all this crochet material, knitting material. It's like, look, clear off that spot, make room for this mate. I really feel like when you start setting the stage to receive something, it'll appear. It'll appear. Like right now for my cooking show, I want a sponsor for the show. And the sponsors are not going to come by osmosis. I have to seek one out, write the letter, do. And so that's what you're going to have to do for the women. So don't get tricked into this thing of running up there. And please, by all means, like to add to what Joe said about men know within 90 days if you're marriage material or not. And a lot of men can change and will change, but not all of them will change for you. Not all of them are for you. That's why you see a lot of men will date you forever and they leave you like that and they're married to somebody else for 50 years. It's like, how did he do that? What was I? Was I not worth it? No, it's not that you weren't worth it. It's just that you didn't have all the qualities that he desired. Mm -hmm. And, he, you know, he stayed there and hoping that you would have the qualities, but you just don't. So some people just don't match, you know. So don't sit there and have this man date you for 10 years, 14 years, live with you, help you raise your kids, and then wonder why he hasn't married you that that thing is true why pay for the cow if the milk is free don't give men wife privileges when you are not their wife when i was dating joe i never went to his apartment and cleaned it and cooked and no a date means you're collecting data so you're going out and you're collecting data on this dude or on this woman so that's the main thing for the men what advice would i give to men mm -hmm. um Kind of like to just add to what Joe said. Um, Joe likes, and I think most men like for a woman to be verbal and to be vocal and to be able to speak her mind and, and use her strength to get what she needs. But there's a way that you can do it. 
You know, there's a way that the women can do it where they don't have to be bossy and beating that man. I see so many of my fellow sisters that are in their 40s, late 40s, and I look at Joe and I, told, I tell him, they're never going to get a spouse. Let me tell you why. It's not because they're not beautiful. It's not because they don't have anything to offer, but it's because they are too independent. So for the women, you don't have to be that independent, okay? When it comes to a relationship, somebody is always being submissive in a relationship. And if it's me being submissive this week, next week it might be Joe being submissive. But you can't lock horns like that and say, let's agree to disagree. I have a vlog up with that name. Let's agree to disagree. That doesn't work. It doesn't work. Somebody has to give in at some point. And it doesn't always have to be you. It could be the other person that's giving in, you know, for the better good of what's going on in the marriage or in the relationship. Yep. You think we covered everything? Well, no, more or less. Like we advised the men and the women. I think I advised the men and the women. I hope I did. Yeah. So. Um, oh, I got that. I think I remember another one. Go, go. I just want to tell anybody, if you could be the woman or the man, mm -hmm. when you get married and stuff, don't marry somebody because you say, well, maybe we will work out. I mean. Okay, you say, well, I love him, but he don't love me. So, but uh, if we're married, uh, maybe we can work out that any go. You know, we can work out. Folks, don't do marry somebody because you love them. Because it's hard enough when you love somebody to stay with them mm -hmm. forever. So when you think you're, I mean, somebody don't love you, you don't love that somebody, and just well, I got married because maybe oh, he could because he got money or he could take care of me, blah blah blah. You know? I have a good story to tell. I'm not going to say who. I'm not going to say if it's friend or family. Okay. But someone had come to Joe a few years, well, a lot of years ago, 25 years ago, and said, I'm going to get married to blah, blah, blah. And they were living with blah, blah, blah already. And Joe says, but are you sure? Because I don't really even think you love her. And then he says, well, what if I let her go and I go out there and I find something worse? And Joe just kind of shook his head because it's been a very tumultuous marriage. And yeah. Yeah, so it, it, he's so true with that. Another quick thing at the end. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. Next thing, yeah, I mean, it, that part I just said. I mean, even though you're love to somebody, like me and Bob, we love each other. But are we in love 365 days a year? No. Because mm -mm. sometimes I want to pop her upside the head. That's the same way she want to pop me upside the head. But <laughs> Dr. Ruth, <laughs> you know who Dr. Ruth is, right, Joe? Little short old lady that, yeah. get, that gave um, sex advice. Yeah. She said a long time ago, back in the early um, 1980s, that nobody is in love 365. It's not, it's true. And that it goes in 90-day cycles. Like, you'll have a 90-day cycle and you're like, okay, whatever. I I'm here. But then you have a 90-day cycle. It's like, oh, my God, I love, 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 love you. <laughs> now, I mean, what I'm saying, you're, go you're not going to see something bad happen to her or him. I mean, but it's not like, oh, I'm all over you for... For 365 years. And this this romance that yeah. people like Steve Harvey likes to talk about Please. all this romance that he does for his wife. And I'm like, you you can't keep that up. That's a lot of energy to keep up that kind of romance and, and stuff all year long. I, I feel like there's some fakeness there. That's our relationship, folks. You gotta keep on exploring all the time. You gotta do different things in life to to make a marriage work. You just can't stay one thing at a time. You know, like when even you, your job. Yeah. You can change your job. Let's somehow. say for instance, I mean your sex life, put it this way. And you go to you go to bed. All you gotta do is this, and that's it. And I mean, you do not try to do to spark up everything. I mean, hey, that get old. I mean, it, <laughs> she just can't do it. This, um, what? Okay, <laughs> I don't know where this took a turn. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Where this took a turn. But yeah. Joe can't stand if I wear an old nightgown. Yeah, I mean, you know, he you, will take it and rip it to shreds. Go get something new. It doesn't have to be even sex. It just go get something new. <laughs> okay, all this part right here, Joe's gonna be in the blooper reel. Let me finish <laughs> it. All right, guys. So, um, infidelity. A lot of people they fear physical and emotional and spiritual infidelity, right? And that's very real in certain marriages. But the one infidelity that they don't guard against is financial infidelity. Your marriage will fail 100% of the time if you have a spouse that is being um, unfaithful with the money. They're making money and not bringing it all home. I've seen that in certain people's marriage in my family. Um, they bring all the money home, but the other spouse just takes it and squanders it on whatever he or she likes. Or they sneak, you know, you'll have uh, one spouse that will sneak and give money to one of the kids without the other spouse saying yes or no. And you'll have that kid that's just milking, that kid that's milking the money. Or they'll take it and give it to the church. 
They'll, you know, so it is a seed of the church and the spouse doesn't know that that money went to the church. You have to be on the same page mm -hmm. with the money. You really do. If you have none or if you have a lot, you have to be on the same page. And like Joe said, he passed the job to me. He never took it back. I've been doing a good job. Nothing has ever shut off. As broke as we've been, nothing has never shut, has ever shut off. And no bill, you know, no, what they call the rent man knocked at the door. No rent man knocked at the door. <laughs> And we figure it out some way, somehow we figure it out. So I think we build a good foundation that when we finally get rich, we're going to be all right. You get rich, she can run off with all the money if she wants to. <laughs> you guys, you guys, pray for me. Pray for me. <laughs> Joe, I want to thank you so much for doing this with me. I know this is out of your element. Mm -hmm. And um, I always give big props to Joe that he's the one that helps me behind the scene at the cooking channel with the recipes. And I was telling a friend that the other day, and I said, you know he can cook better than I do, right? I can make breads better than Joe and cakes and stuff, but he can cook better than I can. And he never ever tries to like take that over. And I always give him his props that he's the one behind the scene, the silent person. And my friend says, it's because he's a king. That's what kings do. So babe, you're a king. One thing I want to put in when it comes to the kids. Mm -hmm. of, I mean, the two parents got to be on the same page when you come to the kids, honestly, because I got my kids right here. They know that if they ask your mother something and your mother doesn't agree, they can't come over and ask me and think I was going to so go against got, me. Right. <laughs> you got to be on the same page, otherwise, then the kids going to get over you. Yeah? That's great advice. Guys, this is kind of long. I wanted it to be fun. Uh, 30 years is a lot of time. I really do love my beautiful Joe, and I know he loves me. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this pop up at the cooking channel now and again, let me know. And you can do that by commenting below. Say, yes, I want to see more videos like this. And by the way, could you answer this question for me next time? And write your question. I'm going to pull them all together. And maybe once a month or maybe once every three months, you know, depending on how many questions come in, we can sit like this again and we can give the best advice we know from our heart. We're not professionals. Don't take anything we say as professional. But we've, we were living proof that you can be in a 30-year marriage and still be happy. And the only reason why I work, I put over my knees. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> okay, sit up straight. Yeah, put those down after this <laughs> You have to okay, you can't look at. Is it gonna bug me if I leave that door open? Because you can't look at that door ever. You want me to close that door? Yeah. Close the door. Okay, I'm gonna close the door. Hold this. You make sure see. You want to sit up straight. I don't want to slide. But don't not do your head so. Relax. 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 All right, so all you see is the lens. <laughs> Give me my paper, because you're going to make a noise with this paper. Hey, guys. <clears throat> all right, we can't have any burping while we're doing the show. <laughs> Every time we have to be on camera, he gets, like, real gaffy. <laughs> he starts burping. <clears throat> you have to do one thing that I don't like sit in front of the camera. You guys. <laughs> I've been waiting for like 10 minutes. Joe went to go get dressed, right? To come do this show with me. I've been waiting for like 10 minutes. He comes over this things where you can see his boobies. No!